The Lakers are coming off an NBA championship, and as of right now, seem to be favourites to do it again in 2021, of course barring any major injury or trade. Many believe that this team is set and should run it back, but with every team, some changes must be made after a season. If the Lakers are too complacent this offseason, it could come back to bite them. So, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at what the Los Angeles Lakers should do this offseason by viewing their potential free agency and trade targets, as well as briefly looking at whether they should make a blockbuster trade for a third star. Before we start, if you're new here and enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe for more NBA content like this. I'm trying to hit 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so all support would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, with that all being said, let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. Firstly, let's take a look at some players that may be on the trading block for the Lakers come this offseason. To be completely honest, there isn't any that stand out a lot, but let's take a look at a couple that have been involved in trade rumors as of late and are a slight possibility of getting moved this winter. The first player who's been in rumors quite a lot is Contavious Coldwell Pope, which is in large thanks to his semi-large contract. Obviously, KCP is entering free agency this offseason but the Lakers may use him in the case of a sign and trade or something like that. If the Lakers wish to trade for a key role player, maybe a guy like Derrick Rose, KCP would likely have to be a part of that deal. As the season went along, he became increasingly better and in the finals was crucial to the Lakers' success. So whilst I still think it is unlikely that he goes, he will be an attractive return piece for a team trading with LA. The next player who may be on the trading iron for the Lakers is Danny Green. Green finished his 2020 season poorly, finding it hard to knock down his shots consistently all bubble long. Some believe that due to that, he may be on the trading block, but if he is to be traded in my eyes, it's more likely due to his sizable contract that could be a salary filler in a deal, or be appealing when trading with another team. Like Coldwell Pope, I do find it hard to see Danny Green being traded realistically, or for the Lakers to offer him first before being asked, but I do think that due to his salary and poor play as of late, he is definitely a chance to be on the way out from Los Angeles this offseason. So with that being said, who are some players that the Lakers may look to target in the offseason? I'm firstly going to be looking at some players that they should re-sign from this season, then some potential trade targets, and finally, my thoughts on them potentially trading for a third star. So let's get into it. The Lakers have multiple players entering free agency. One is obviously Anthony Davis, but it's pretty obvious that he'll be re-signing, and it's also pretty obvious that the Lakers should re-sign him as well, so I won't go over him too much. One player that's in free agency though, and isn't locked in to stay in LA, is Rajon Rondo, and I truly believe it's in the Lakers' best interest to keep him around, for at least another season. Rondo was essential to the Lakers' success in the playoffs, and was at times LA's third best player, as he was able to carve out defenses and play make to a high level. He was also a good scorer as well throughout the playoffs, knocking down over 40% of his three-point attempts, which is just insane. He was super valuable to LA, so in my eyes, they should do everything in their power to keep him around. He is too vital to this team's success to let go of. There are many other squads like the Clippers that are interested in Rondo, and to let him walk away would be a terrible decision, in my opinion. Some other Lakers players that are entering free agency this offseason are JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard, and Avery Bradley. To me, I'd like to think they'd keep Dwight Howard around. I know he's been linked to other teams like the Warriors, but he's a pretty perfect role player for them, and I'd hate to see him be let go after a phenomenal bounce back season. JaVale McGee is more than likely going, he barely played in the playoffs so I doubt LA re-signs him, and finally with Avery Bradley, if they can get him on a fair, cheapish deal, I think he'd be a good player to re-sign as well. His defense is instrumental at times. So that's what the Lakers should do 
regarding their own players come free agency. So, taking a look outside their current roster, who are some players that the Los Angeles Lakers should target this offseason via a trade or in free agency? A player that has been linked to the Lakers quite heavily in reports lately is Derek Rose, and I personally believe he would be a great addition for LA. With the potential for the Lakers bench to weaken over the offseason due to many of their role players entering free agency, a trade for a guy like Rose would definitely be worth it. Rose has been on the rise lately ever since he joined Minnesota and then Detroit, and he is now commonly regarded as a good to great level scorer in the league today. He could be a fantastic scoring option for LA off the bench in the second unit and would be able to lead the offense when LeBron takes a seat. Basically, though Rose is past his prime, his improving scoring ability as he becomes healthier, his past experience with LeBron from back in 2017 and, and his quite small contract makes a trade for Rose seem very likely and it would be amazing for the Lakers in all aspects, in my opinion. Some people have also brought up that the Lakers may target a third star this offseason, in particular, Chris Paul. So, would this be worth it? Should the Lakers go after CP3? Well, let's take a look at some cons first, because there are definitely some negatives to this. Firstly, it doesn't put LA in a great position for the future, once guys like LeBron and Paul retire they'd likely lose a lot of young talent in the deal, such as a guy like Caruso, so that would hurt them down the track, and a draft pick would likely be included as well. As the Lakers already have very limited picks for the next few seasons, losing another one does not help again. The Lakers would also have one of the weakest benches in the NBA because of it, and since they already weren't great in that area this season, to deplete it even more is definitely a concern. There are some positives, however, to a trade for Chris Paul. For one, Chris Paul is a perfect fit. To keep it simple, he would take over some of the playmaking duties from LeBron, and the duo of him and Davis would be insanely deadly. The pick and roll between those two would be ridiculously good. They'd create one of the greatest star tandems in the league and would be bound for more success. With Paul's original trade to the Lakers back in 2011 being vetoed, this would finally give him the opportunity to don the purple and gold, and I guarantee he'd make the most of that. Paul is not washed up yet, and still has a lot to give, so he'd be extremely impactful to Los Angeles. In my opinion overall though, I think the negatives outweigh the positives here. Obviously, the Lakers want to win now, and with CP3, they would probably be the team to beat. With such a depleted bench and roster though, and with Paul and LeBron nearing the twilight of their careers, this trade probably wouldn't be worth it down the track, nor now, as they just won without Paul, so I really wouldn't see the point. Also, the NBA plans to have a very quick turnaround for the next season, so blowing things up now wouldn't be ideal, as they'd have very limited time to get a cohesive system running. But overall, I think the Lakers' main focus this offseason is to simply not get too complacent. If they let key role players like Rondo go, it will heavily damage their chances of repeating, as their bench depth already isn't great. If we take a quick detour here, just look at the Dallas Mavericks in 2011 and then their 2012 season. After winning the championship, they became complacent and let some key role players go, and that would hurt them the next season. And if LA does a similar thing by allowing guys like Rondo to walk without improving their roster already, the same could happen to them. On the topic of getting a third star or running it back, I think LA run it back for the most part. Some trades here and there to continue to upgrade their roster will be important, such as getting a guy like Derek Rose. But if I was the Lakers, I wouldn't even consider going for a guy like Chris Paul. It just wouldn't be worth it to me. With the NBA planning a quick turnaround for the 2021 season, starting virtually afresh would not be beneficial at all, and the teams that have a very similar core will be the ones that likely have more success. 
At the end of the day, the Lakers are very set for next season with their current roster and will likely contend for a chip again. Don't get me wrong. However, if they remain unworried and don't be at least somewhat aggressive during the offseason, it could come back to bite them in 2021. A lot of teams around them will be improving. A lot of teams will be pursuing that next piece that will push them over the edge. If the Lakers don't do too much, they may slip behind. And though I'm not saying they would definitely lose, it would be harder to see them winning it all. To keep it simple though, Keep guys like Rondo, attempt to upgrade your roster and overall depth by making moves for solid vets like Derek Rose. And with that, I can thoroughly believe that the Lakers will go back to back in 2021. And that will conclude the video. What do you guys think of this? How good will the Lakers be next year to you? What should they do this offseason to increase their chances of going back to back? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe. But with that being said, I am out. Peace.